Hey guys, Jessica Shire here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm participating in the huge encouragement hop. So this is kind of a different hop than just a video hop or a blog hop. This is a card hop. So this is put on by Mary Polanco, Courtney Creeper, and Jen from Scrapbina Creations. So down in that description box below, there will be any other information that I have about this card hop that also includes the next person in this lineup that you should check out. All right, so what we're working with today is some Bristol Smooth cardstock. This is the 100 pound. I also have some masking tape. This is just masking tape from my local hardware store. Nothing specific. I recently got another set of Tombow markers. So if you have kind of followed my channel for a little bit, I have really been enjoying trying out these Tombow markers with the dual brush for watercoloring. And I had the bright set. I also picked up the more pastel set. So I'm going to kind of combine the two sets and create a watercolor stripey background. So off to the right, I have a Art Impressions watercolor palette. It's just very small, so it's great for certain things like this that I don't have to bring out my Tim Holtz glass media mat for. And this is something along with their watercolor brush, the Connoisseur watercolor brush that I picked up at the Scrapbook Expo. So new to me products that I'm just trying out today. So I'm gonna try this a couple different ways until I kind of figure out what I like. I went in with the yellow marker. I'll have all the numbers for these Tombow markers listed on the top left hand corner there. But I went in with yellow onto that watercolor palette, just scribbled on there and then picked up that color with a water brush. And I'm using the Niji water brush. It's my favorite water brush. And then I applied that to that corner. I'm also going to try going in with the actual marker to that stripe on the paper. And this one I'm using two different tones of oranges. And then I try to blend that out with a water brush. For the largest stripe, I try going in with the marker again, just laying down color with that marker. And then I blend out with the watercolor brush from Art Impressions. It's not the, actually their brand, it's the Connoisseur brand, but I blend out with that. And this actually works, I think, the best. I have more control over the water and it doesn't pill as much with that Bristol paper because this isn't watercolor paper. So the Bristol paper will take a little bit of water, but it can't handle a whole lot. So that's the technique that I'm gonna be using for the rest of this is actually using a, the watercolor brush. And I'm gonna lay down my color straight from the marker to the paper. I think it was the fastest and just the easiest way to do that. So I do try to keep a two-tone for these stripes. And I was actually surprised how well the Bristol paper held up because I was not being very gentle with it. This is just regular masking tape. You'll see a little bit later that I'm pretty rough. I just like yanked that tape off and it didn't tear the paper at all. So once I have my six colors down, I'm going to peel up a couple of those pieces. I'm gonna to try to reuse as much of the masking tape as I can, but I do end up grabbing more strips of tape. But I do end up grabbing more because either it gets stuck to itself or it was too coated with the markers and I didn't want it to mix onto that blank space. So I'm gonna make some smaller lines with that masking tape. And for these ones, I'm using just the lighter colors. So I have that light blue above the blue, and then I'm gonna use a lighter green. This is more of a mint green, but it works. And then I'll do the same with the light pink, the lighter reddish pink, more of a light red pink, <laughs> and then the light orange too. So you can see I'm not really waiting for this to dry either. I basically just use the masking tape as a mask to block out my stripes, and then once I lay down the color, I'm basically just ripping it off that paper. 
right away. It hasn't had a whole lot of time to dry, but I don't think this really needs a lot because I'm not putting a lot of water down. These Tombow markers really do react well with water. So for my third stripes, I'm going to go in, I'm going to make them a little bit larger. I am leaving a white gap in between each stripe. And if you can hear anything in the background, that is my dog. She's snoring again. So it's cute, but it might be a little bit annoying. <laughs> so we just got back from a walk and she is out. I do like the fact that if you don't get enough color down, and it's still wet, you can scribble that marker onto that watercolor palette and then pick up the color and add more to it. So that was pretty quick. It was pretty fast and easy. It's definitely not perfect, <laughs> but I like the bright colors. I'm trying to get in my last few summary themed colored cards. So I go, I went ahead and I cut that in half. So this piece of Bristol cardstock is about five and three quarters by four and I think it's four and seven sixteenths. But I do just end up cutting that in half and I'm going to make two different cards. That's kind of how this evolved. For the sentiment on this, I'm going to use the Ink Road Stamps Chin Up Buttercup. And this is one of my favorite stamps by the Ink Road. And I've been wanting to use this one again. So for this panel, it has the lighter stripes, I think. I think the other one has a bit more darker colors in it. So for this one, I'm going to stamp it with Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink and then use some British Monroe Alabaster Embossing Powder. I'm going to heat set that with my Wagner heat gun. And it kind of fades into that cardstock, so I'm going to make that sentiment pop off of that pattern in just a moment. But for my second one, this is a darker striped one, I'm going to just stamp it with some VersaFine Clair ink and give it that really dark, bold black sentiment against that colorful striped background, which I really like. I'm going to set that aside so that it dries fully. I wanted to kind of mix some colors together and create more of a gray. It ended up purple, which I was okay with, but I didn't like the way that this turned out in the end. I didn't like the tone of purple with these colorful backgrounds. It wasn't bad. So I do go and I fix that a little bit later. And I do that by doing the same technique that I'm doing now with the black sentiment except with a blue marker. So it does have that blue line all the way around and that worked out pretty well. But I was really happy with how this yellow marker reacted with all those different colored stripes. The top of markers play really well together. And I don't know, I thought this was super fun. I just like how that yellow makes that black sentiment pop even more off of that colorful stripe background. Sometimes it's really hard to get a sentiment to do that because the background is so busy. So you'll see that one with the blue outline in just a moment. I think it looks a lot better and it's a little bit darker. To mount these onto some Simon Says Stamp gray cardstock, for the one with the blue outline I'm using a fog and then for the other one with the black sentiment I'm using slate. So before I go further, I wanted to add some splatters to these. So I pulled out my Kiritake Starry Colors watercolor set. This set has a whole bunch of different golds in it. So I normally use a champagne gold, but I thought I would use a bit of a darker gold. So I go with the red gold. And I'm going to just splatter this a little bit on the corners. So I'm using that same watercolor brush and an acrylic block. I just wanted to create a little bit of splatters in the corners. The sentiment is so bold and the background is so busy. Anyways, I don't think it needs a whole lot. Plus I wanted to add some sequins too and another sentiment. With the Hero Arts, uh, this is that stamp set from their May kit that had all of the crafty goodies and images. 
So this sentiment says, you make the world a beautiful place. And I did stamp that using the versifying clay on the white cardstock and the alabaster embossing on black cardstock. So to be true to Jessica's style, I'm going to take those panels that I had just watercolored splattered with and I'm going to mount those onto some crafty foam. I picked out the bright blue and this more burgundy red, which I thought would work nicely with that black sentiment. While I wait for those to dry, I'm going to set them underneath some acrylic blocks and take a little coffee break while I wait for those to fully adhere together. And the added weight does help and the added caffeine in my system definitely helps. While I was on my coffee break, I also mounted those panels to some Nina 110 pound top fold card bases, just the A2 size, using the same ultra bond adhesive. So now I can start putting everything together. I take out my sentiments and I'm going to attach those to the bottom of the chin up buttercup sentiment with my ATG. And I thought these needed just a bit more color and a more shine. So I go ahead and add dots of glue with multimedia matte glue. And for this one, I'm going to place the Ink Road Stamps Gems. This one's called Max Red. And this was actually named after a crafty friend, Aunt Max, which is super fun. And it matches that craft foam pretty well. And I like that pop of dark red. These are also very, uh, is it iridescent? They kind of shift in color. For my other panel, I'm gonna use Doodlebugs sequins in the blue jeans. So this is a, like a variety pack. It has like light blues, dark blues, a little bit of everything in there. So I'm gonna take a couple of the darker blues and mix in some of those darker matte colors too and put these sequins in the same areas as I did with those other gems. So I hope you enjoy continuing on with this encouragement card hop and don't forget to click on to the next person in line. And that's it from me guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I really do appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one. Meh, meh.